you're looking at one of the earliest Godzilla video games ever made. Godzilla Coon. This was a game for the MSX, along with this Mothra video game called Monsters Fair. I've got some things to say about Godzilla Coon and Monsters Fair. But first... Hey, this video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Securico. You're invited to experience Japan from the comfort of your own home through these amazing snack boxes. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box. A few years back, I had my own subscription to this. I used to go through them with my coworkers at the office, and it was such a good time trying everything. Look at all this, you get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavor Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan. This month's theme is the Sakura Picnic Party. Sakura season is when the beautiful cherry blossoms emerge in Japan. Here's a booklet to tell you all about it and let you know what you got in the box. As well as any relevant allergen information and wealth of information about Japanese culture. I loved the soda. I loved, loved the peach Kit Kats a lot. Truth be told, I already ate everything you're looking at right now. Except this cola-flavored lollipop that you could dip in the candy powder here. Now that is a bubbly burst of flavor. Sakurako is another monthly box, and this one supports local Japanese snack makers with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including teas and this Japanese tableware. There's flowers in the tea. There's real cherry blossoms in the tea. Very sweet tea. In the box, my favorite was the Sakura shortbread cookies. Send me more. Get your own box of either, or get it as a really neat gift for someone you know. Check their special Sakura promotion from the link in the description below this video. You know I import a lot of things from Japan, and if you want an excellent sampling of all their yummy snacks, these boxes are the way to go. Nineteen eighty-four was a big year for Godzilla! He was back in Japanese movie theaters after a nine-year break. Japan was all in on Godzilland, a marketing blitz with tons of merchandise featuring little cute versions of Godzilla and other monsters. And the very first Godzilla video games were making their debut. Three of these early games were on the MSX, a popular system at the time. They were Godzilla vs. Three Giant Monsters, which I've already covered in a previous video, and Godzilla Coon and Monsters Fair, which I will cover right now. Godzilla Coon is officially a Godzilla video game, and I've always thought it was really cool that Godzilla got an actual video game. In this game, you play as Godzilla and you have to go on a quest to save Manila through a maze that's formatted like a perfect square with 49 rooms. Hey, this is the plot of the movie Cube! Each room you go in has a puzzle where you need to figure out how to clear the big rocks. And while you're doing this, fucking everyone is attacking you! Look at this guy immediately charging at me! That's Ingiris! That's my best friend! Not anymore! I can expect this behavior from Mechagodzilla and Hidora, but Rodan? Baragon? I can't trust anybody. Your default defense is a giant fist punch. Yeah, fuck all of you for doing this to me. You send those assholes flying right off the screen. Except Hidora. Hidora will only go back a little, then come charging at you all over. You can also get rid of these guys by pushing boulders on them. Holy shit, did you just see that? I splattered him into a pool of blood! It even made a splash sound! Godzilla is a murderer, but it's okay, they come right back. What is this door, some kind of cloning device? If Godzilla loses his life bar, he too spontaneously combusts into a cloud of blood. Just like in the Godzilla and art. You can climb vines, but don't go in water because it's common knowledge that water kills Godzilla. Water kills Godzilla. Each time you clear a room, you can pick a direction to go, and the point is to work your way around the grid and find the room with Manila. Get off the vine, you're gonna die! Ow! What the fuck, what the fuck, what the, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the... There are power-ups along the way, like an hourglass that stops time for a few seconds.
Wait, why does Mechagodzilla have a pool of blood? A bomb that clears the screen. And the instruction book says there's a power-up where you can use your atomic breath, too. I just haven't found it. And if you take too long to clear a room, King Ghidorah shows up and fucks you up. He's invincible and he comes right after you. All right, let's start with the good. It doesn't look bad for 1985. It definitely gives me that early video game feel, like Burger Time or Dig Dug. Some sprites look really good. I like a good puzzle game, and this one delivers with increasingly difficult puzzles as you pro- Oh fuck, I'm trapped! And one cool feature of this game is that you can actually customize puzzles. Yeah, it's got a built-in Mario Maker, that's cool! Although I can't really make this feature work out on this ROM. Help! I'm trapped! I'm trapped in an endless void! The game is intuitive, it's pick up and play, and it's pretty easy to earn more lives as you go, so with effort, this whole thing is entirely doable. But the bad stuff? Oh boy, here it comes. The monsters are annoying as fuck. They're constantly in your face. Even if you manage to kill one, he respawns right away. There's no moment of peace. And if you're constantly worried about these assholes, it's hard to focus on solving the puzzle. You're literally trying to do two things at once. It's like if someone made you do math homework, but while you're doing it, you also have to block him from slapping you in the face over and over. And some monsters are bigger pains than others. Rodan and Hedora are particularly brutal. If Rodan comes at you from directly above or below, there's nothing you could do. You're taking some damage. And if Hedora blocks your path, fuck you! You're trapped and the only way out is to take some more damage. And that's happened more than a few times. Whether I take damage or they take damage, it's the same sound effect. I hate that! Sometimes when punching an enemy, I hear the sound and I assume I, I also took a hit, so I have to check the life bar. Using the same audio cue for both really messes with my brain. The music loop is short and it will drive you crazy. I know this is common for these old games, but this one in particular kind of numbs your brain. Something about this game must have really resonated because half a decade later it came to America on Game Boy and was just titled Godzilla. The Godzilla and cutesy stuff was totally removed, except for the cute sprites, but otherwise it's the same game right down to the same goddamn problems. Rodan coming from below, Hedorah getting in the way. It's actually amazing how sane these games are, the only major difference being the puzzle rooms themselves were changed. Oh, and no blood. Maybe you need to hit A-B-A-C-A-B-B. -A -B -B. But in Japan, instead of this version of the game, they got Godzilla-kun Great Monster March. It's the same game, but this one was themed to look like the serialized manga called SD Godzilla World, Godzilla-kun, which itself is sort of a spin-off of Godzilla. So we've gone full circle. But the Japanese version also fixes so many issues with this game. The enemy patterns were fixed to be more fair, you can move faster, it brought back the atomic breath power-up, which is oddly missing in the American version. Bottom line, there are three different versions of this goddamn rock-smashing maze puzzle game. And you know what? I'd be down for a fourth. Two and a half stars! Moving over to Monsters Fair, which came out in 1986 and technically isn't a Godzilla video game, but a Mothra video game. This sleeve art is way better than it has any right to be. Seriously, it's so goddamn epic. I'd blow it up and hang it on my wall as a poster. In this game, the peaceful infant island is attacked by Alien X, who kidnap the Shobijin twins and plan to use their power to conquer the Earth. The islanders pray for Mothra to save the twins, but Alien X is mind-controlling the other monsters to attack her. In the book for this game, the monsters are again represented by Godzilla and art, and the sprites themselves can be considered Godzilla ish So is this another Godzilla video game? I'll leave that for you to decide. Okay, Monsters Fair, let's go. Whoa! Right out of the gate, Gazora is charging at me. And for whatever reason, Gazora can respawn three fucking times. That's a major pain. 
No, fuck this. Run, 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 dead. I'm making a run for it. Run, 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 dead. Mothra looks like a little shrimp when she dies. I know this because I've died a lot. Because this game is hard as fucking hell. You get three lives, and it's astonishing how fast they go. Hidora is in the ocean tossing shit at you and can hit you from virtually anywhere you go on the screen. But if you've got three Gazoras charging at you, you're focused on that while Hidora's kicking your ass. And what really sucks is that your attacks as Mothra have no fucking distance. I can't hit people from across the screen like they could do to me. Monsters fair? More like monsters unfair. <laughs> Godzilla's usually hanging around two Manilas. Can you fucking imagine that? Two Manilas? Godzilla, Godzilla says we should, should fight our own battles. battles. Oh my fucking god. Godzilla can charge you diagonally and use his atomic breath. This game is so brutal. Why is this game so brutal? Sometimes when you shoot a random spot, you unveil a hidden power-up to get your life meter recharged. But why is it hidden? You didn't need to hide it. Why? The game's not impossible, but the only way through is to basically memorize the board, memorize the location of every monster, and memorize where these power-ups are. And then slowly progress upwards, knocking out each enemy one by one. And even then it's still hard as hell. And on top of all this, there's this section with these mystery gates where the board will keep repeating if you don't do it right. Oh, these MSX games love their fucking puzzles! God damn it, my Mothra just keeps dying, so at least it's an accurate movie adaptation. I can't even make it that far, so I gotta jack footage from other channels to show you Adult Mothra. Yeah, you eventually get to be Adult Mothra, and fly over the ocean and through cities. That looks fun, I wanna do that! That's when you see other monsters like, IS THAT MECHAGODZILLA?! I guess it looks good. And King Ghidorah actually looks better here than he does in Three Giant Monsters. And what's your reward if you actually survive this gauntlet? Thank you, Mothra! That's it. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. It wasn't a problem at all. Don't sweat it. You two better kiss my ass the rest of my days. Instead of singing the Mothra song, I want to hear some Weezer out of you two. And make sure it's early Pinkerton Weezer. One and a half stars. Out of these three games, I've got to say my favorite is Three Giant Monsters. Godzilla Kun could have been number one with some tweaks, but it's a bit too rough around the edges. And Monsters Fair? Well, just fuck Monsters Fair. More like Monsters Fart. Did I really finish reviewing the MSX Trilogy before I finished reviewing the Pipeworks Trilogy? Yes. Yes, I did. Until next time. Special thanks to my patrons, including Akno Goji. He's in the tier where I say his name, so Akno Goji, Akno Goji, Akno Goji! And everyone else.